Toronto residents are expressing anger and disgust amid the city's municipal election race. Some candidates have endured racist comments during debates, and the most recent incident happened just this weekend. Council candidate Munira Abukar discovered that vandals scrawled hateful remarks on one of her campaign signs. She says she was disheartened to find the words, go back home, and her photo defaced in ink. Abukar is one of 14 people running for a council seat against current mayor Rob Ford. Voters choose a city council and mayor at the end of this month. Now for her reaction, Munira Abukar joins us now on the side. And so just tell me a little bit about these, these what, when you, what, 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 what went through your mind when you saw this campaign sign and you saw it defaced in this hateful way? It was pretty frustrating to watch. I think for me, the, the genuine first response I had was shock and anger. Mm -hmm. When we were picking up the signs, an auntie had told me the night before that she had saw a couple of signs vandalized. And so I, I had assumed that, the, that they were just, you know, like small doodles and, and meaningless mischief, I think, that young people were doing. Right. And so my parents and I, when we went to go pick up a few of the signs that we saw scattered on the road, were shocked to see such hateful and intentional language. So there were, there were a number of signs that had been de defaced. This, there, was a, there were a number of signs that were defaced and, and for me, it really was making sure that I, I had not assumed that the signs were intentional. For us in our campaign, for, and for me personally, this was really the first example of intentional hateful language on our signs. And so it triggered, I think, a lot of responses in me. But the, the larger frustration I had was seeing the shock and dismay and also heartbreak on my parents' face. I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when they first came to Canada, they experienced a lot of racism. And to live that again vicariously through their children is, is not an easy experience to be going through. In 2014, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy, but uh, it's real. And you've also received some threatening Twitter uh, messages and emails, right? Tell us about those. We have. I mean, I mean, I'm proud to say that I'm from Toronto. I'm proud to call Toronto my home. And what I've been so humbled and, and really emotional by is to see all, this, all the support. I think love is always better than hate, and love always trumps hate. And so to see people, you know, really saying that they stand with me and they stand in solidarity to end hate in any form has been amazing. But unfortunately, you, you're always going to come across a few people who are ignorant. I think yeah. um, racism stems from ignorance. It's, it stems from this. What are the nature of the emails and the, a, a the lot messages? Of the, a lot of them... Um, a lot of them are very violent towards the fact that I'm, a different, I'm a, of a different faith, right? I'm, I'm mm. of Muslim descent, right. and I'm a very proud Muslim. But I think a lot of people um, take to calling me jihadist, take to calling me a terrorist, um, that I support ISIS and that I you know, work with ISIS on my weekends. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's anything from that to like really derogatory language I wouldn't want to express it on camera because it triggers a lot of people, right, to be mm -hmm. reading that, but then also to be getting emails saying that the, the behavior is going to continue. Do you have any idea? Who are, who's sending these messages to you and who's defacing your signs? I, I, I honestly wish I knew. I think for me, it's I don't give hate the room to grow and I don't give it the room to, to impact my life. Yeah. It happens. I think the frustration I have is that if you're able to write on a sign in the middle of the night um, and you really believe those ideas, let's have a conversation as to why you believe what mm -hmm. you believe. Right? I think hate is really ignorance. And if we can choose to educate it um, and choose to, to really transform it, then we, we can choose to have a city with love. But for me, it's... I wish I knew who did, but then if I don't, I'm not going to let it affect my life and let it affect the life of the city. That's good. Um, unfortunately, you're not the only one. Other people have also. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Kristen Wong, Wong Tam, uh, she is a city councillor. She says that she got a, a hate-filled letter from a person claiming to support Ford Nation. Uh, we also saw that moment uh, during a debate when um, Olivia Chow was debating the other mayoral candidates, oh, the yeah. two other mayoral candidates, and someone said, go I think go home or go back home or something like that. Doug Ford did denounce that, um, but do you feel that he's doing enough to try and distance himself? Uh, are the Fords doing enough to try and distance themselves from people who say they support the Fords, but who also have been, and we don't know who mm -hmm. is sending these messages mm -hmm. to you, but who have been, um, who, who've, who've made these comments? Do you think that he needs? Do you think he needs to do more? I don't. I'm, I'm actually quite disappointed in Doug. I think beyond just him running to be the next mayor of our city, he actually also is council where I live, so I'm part of his constituents. Yeah. And I think for me, not hearing a response in the last 24 hours has been really, it's really been abysmal on this part. I think it's a matter of not choosing to distance yourself from those who are, are hateful and support you. It's a matter of holding them accountable. I mean, I've been humbled by, by receiving support both from Kristen and Olivia. And so I think it's because they've experienced racism and they've experienced what it means to be told you're not from Toronto, that they understand and, and show solidarity and support. But I'm disappointed in both John and Doug because it's a matter of, you know what, in this campaign and in this city, we've been really addressing issues of, of privilege and of what it means to be told you're not from Toronto. And so I think, first and foremost, as my counselor, um, there should have been a response from the Fords. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I think if you're really in it for the city and if you're really for the little guy, I'm the little guy. I'm the little guy who's being pushed out and, and being told that I'm not from here. 
And so where is your response? I mean, where is your civic duty, but also your duty as a human being to really say that you're against this kind of violence? I haven't heard anything from, from either Doug or Rob. And that breaks my heart because it's a matter of if we're really mm -hmm. building a diverse city, if yeah. diversity is really our strength in Toronto, you need to, to really call this action accountable and say, I'm not with you and I don't mm -hmm. want your vote if you're going to be showing this kind of hate. Munira Bukhar, good to speak to you today. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you so in. much. Thank you for having Munira, me. Munira Bukhar is a candidate for councillor in Toronto's municipal elections.